Hello, it is Thursday, September 2nd, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Thursday puzzle, as I always think about it. The One of the trickier puzzles of the week. Not always the most difficult in terms of raw challenge, but often there's something tricky or unusual or particularly clever about a Thursday puzzle, and we can already see, actually, through the gauzy privacy veil that there are some circled cells. So we'll see what that has in store for us. But before we do, let's read some comments from yesterday's puzzle that elaborate on some of the clues we went up against. This is a very interesting one, I thought. Uh, Lossy V, maybe pronouncing that incorrectly, says, there's a clue that is very dependent on American slash British culture in a strange way. So this related to a Harry Potter clue, and the comment explains, Harry Potter is Rose Granger Weasley's uncle by marriage, which is not a concept in Finland, at least. The only ways to describe how Rose is related to Harry Potter in my culture would be to call her spouse's niece or brother-in-law's daughter. Just niece does not mean anything, as Harry does not have any siblings. So that is very interesting, that in Finland, um, that particular sort of relationship, nephew and niece, uh, doesn't go through marriage. It only goes through blood. So that's fascinating. I wonder if that is true for other cultures. Let me know in the comments if you have any any uh, context on that. And uh, this person was asked by Ermintrude, so how do you address your mom's sister's husband? Just by name? Here they'd be uncle name. And then the reply is, yes, mostly by name, or call him my aunt's husband if talking to somebody who doesn't know them. So, yeah, fascinating. And uh, Alex Levendahl points out that uh, the accompanying article to this crossword, which I I, um, I never think to look at, but actually if you scroll down, you can see that here there's this wordplay column that is updated every day about the uh, the crossword in question. And actually it's, it's nice that I scrolled down and glanced at that because it points out that this is a debut of the constructor in question, David W. Tufts. So anyway, Alex has been reading those accompanying articles and points out with respect to this one that the creator Sean Yamada Hunter saw this puzzle as a quote, introductory themeless with only the grid art and related clue to justify not including it on a Friday or Saturday. And if you recall, this puzzle had that enormous F the IF glyphs illustrated with black squares, and then the, the one single themed clue dealing with that, which was quite excellent. And um, goes on to point out, it's fun to note that while there are some old friends of crossword ease throughout the puzzle, relatively few actually cross the long answers that define the puzzle. Asai cordoned off indeed. So yeah, I actually think that's true. Yesterday's puzzle was pretty impressive. It needed a huge quantity of of three cell words, three letter words, in order to fill the unusual grid. Um, but it didn't lean too hard on crossword ease. Not too bad. It was a well, well, well made puzzle. And finally, Frederick S., with respect to iOS, the uh, operating system that is used on iPhones and iPads, points out, I was curious if the I in iOS stands for anything, and I found this article quoting Steve Jobs as saying, beyond the reference to the internet and the IMAX focus on giving consumers a good experience online, Jobs expanded that I also means some other things to us. The Mac was focused on consumers as well as the education market, which fit in with the other I themes of individual instruct, inform, and inspire. So Frederick S. adds, I guess it means whatever you want it to mean, or simply just I. Well, I would prefer, I prefer to think of iOS as the individual operating system or the instruct operating system, the most, the most ridiculous, perhaps. Anyway, that's it. Let's move on to today's puzzle. As we just learned, a debut puzzle by David W. Tufts, edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, no further ado, let's get started. Okay. Part of VAT. VAT is a, um, a type of consumption tax that is levied in many countries, not, the, not in the United States. I don't know if there are any states that individually levy VAT, but I, I'm not familiar with that. We have sales tax in the US. But anyway, here in the UK, we have a value-added tax, 
which is what VAT stands for. So this could be value or added. Um, could be either of those. And there's unfortunately no shared letters that also share a position in those words, so we can't put anything in quite yet. A wood shaping tool, ah. A wood shaping tool, though, is probably, oh no, it's not an awl, right? Because an awl would be made of wood and used to shop to shape clay. Would it be an odds? A-D-Z? Either one starts with A, so perhaps we can fill in added for value added tax. Um, would this work here? Fencers cry. So here we see these, um, uh, I'm sorry, we see these uh, circles that bookend some of these clues. So this is probably theme related. Is there something this could be that isn't all or odds? An axe? Because a fencer, well, I was going to say a fencer's cry would be on guard, but that's not enough letters to fit the numbers of cells we have to fill. Maybe I'll delete this for now and come back to it. I'm sorry if there's a, a fencer's cry starting with Z that's very obvious to you. Pigs will sooner fly. I'm not seeing that just yet. Rumble in the jungle promoter. Uh, <laughs> this I think is a boxing match. Was it a Muhammad Ali boxing match? I only say that because a lot of the famous ones were his. Not sure. I don't know who the promoter would have been. To get involved could be enroll. This is a word that is spelled with different number of L's in British and American English. Organization with strict schedules. And there's a question mark. So uh, because of the question mark, there's sort of there's some kind of pun going on in here. And schedule could refer to uh, classification of drugs, drug scheduling in the U.S. You have uh, Schedule One drugs, which are claimed by the government to be the most, uh, I don't know, dangerous or harmful of them. So this could be the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Agency. Here we have an aerial view provider, a drone, I suppose. Ah, so maybe this is odds. Fencers cry. I was thinking maybe with that letter it could be Zorro or something, but then that wouldn't work with DEA. Zebra? Could it be a fence, not meaning a fencing, not meaning fencing with a sword, but fencing with a barrier of some kind? Not really sure. Pigs will, oh, pigs will sooner flies dream on. Sorry. Maybe the Z is not part of the Maybe enroll is not enroll. I think maybe it's, maybe this is on guard. So if a fencer's cry is on guard, maybe this other letter is, is, is another Z or an A. Maybe it's sort of spanning the alphabet, A to Z or something. Maybe it's backwards. I mean, if this were A, maybe on guard could be read backwards. Would that be anything? Oops. That would actually, well, that, that could allow for enroll and get involved. Rumble in the jungle, jungle promoter, I don't know. And we have this fun word, Zadragnia, which is amusing. Link between two names. So this could be, um, let's say you had two names and one of them were, was an alias being used by a criminal or something. You might link the two names with AKA, also known as. Uh, well, that doesn't work with get involved as in role. I mean, I'm going kind of out on a limb here with this Zadragnia business. It's probably not correct. I'm gonna delete that. I don't think it's true. I'm gonna put in on guard again. So if we put AKA back in there, then get involved would be engage, which is pretty plausible. And then here we have wishy-washy RSVP. So um, RSVP, respondez s'il vous plaît, please respond to an invitation. Um, 
wishy-washy. I might, I suppose. I might come. Here we have contents of a certain shelf. Not sure. Blank dog. And here we have K to 12 subjects. So K to 12, this is uh, the United States education uh, system spanning from early years education, kindergarten, to the end of secondary school, 12th grade. That's what that refers to. So it could be ENG for English. Consonants of a certain shelf. Ice shelf. That sounds plausible. Uh, and then this Hilton alternative, well, with the, so this is an international hotel chain and another international hotel chain in five letters, starting with H would be Hyatt. That makes me think this, this is a tough one if you don't happen to already know it. It would be hard to infer, I think. Um, probably a Coney dog, which I think is a, is some, is a sort of a, I don't remember what, what goes on a Coney dog, but it's a hot dog dressed with specific things that would originate from Coney Island in New York, I think. Or it might be that a Coney dog is actually from Chicago. Sorry to residents of New York and or Chicago who I'm offending with my uh, my lack of knowledge about this. I'm sorry. Someone let me know. But I do think it's Coney dog, probably. And that makes Don King here, which I think is a name I've heard, but I don't, you know, I wouldn't have known him to be this. Here we have a snitch. A snitch is a rat, a grass, someone who tells. Sean of Stranger Things. Um, was Sean Astin in that? That looks plausible. Well, I'll correct that. I'll have to keep a look at it in case that's wrong. Parents and grandparents in slang with the. Parents and grandparents in slang with the the. I don't know. Slimming aid, diet something. Co-star of 2019's Joker. Um, who was in that? So the Joker was Joaquin Phoenix. Who else? Was, I don't remember who else was in that movie. Um... I don't know. Sorry. Curious could be odd. Parents and grandparents and slang. Oh, I see. It's the olds. <laughs> I guess as basically an old now, I didn't uh, didn't pick up on this epithet for those like me. I was stuck in traffic, maybe. So maybe that's a lie. And then the co-star. Oh, maybe we... I wonder if this A is part of it, or if all of these circled letters get left out in both directions. So yeah, that makes this interesting as well. I mean, it could be diet cola or something, or I don't know, diet food, probably not diet food. But if the but if this circled letter is missing, then it might only be three letters. Let's keep going. Prefix with binary. It could be non-binary, as in gender. Uh, style of diamond with a flat base. Oof, that's not good. I don't know. With these circles, these clues with these circles, I really want to be confident about them since I don't entirely know how the theme works just yet. Apple on Apple Music. Ah, well, Apple Music is a music subscription service, so it could be Fiona Apple, the musician. So the co-star of 2019's Joker... Boy, I'm not... I'm just not seeing that. Maybe it's maybe it's someone I'm not familiar with. Astronomer Carl could be Carl Sagan. It could be and probably is. Like someone receiving baseless accusations, maybe. Ah, so the question mark means this is a bit of a pun. So let's read this as like someone receiving accusations of baselessness. Like someone who's being accused of not being at the base. They're AWOL. Away without leave, maybe, is what that stands for in military terminology. When a member of the military is gone without having had permission to be gone. A key ring item, a fob, a key fob, the thing that you have on your key ring to 
I don't know, make it easier to see, I suppose, or grab. Throw it away. You throw waste away, I suspect that is. So here we have a spot for a dinner plate. Ah, okay. So I do think the circled letters are not part of the answer. I do think that to be true, because this could be table mat. Might call it a place mat in the United States. Generates dubiously with up. Ah, uh, it could be gins up. I guess gins up has a bit of a, ginning something up has a bit of a dubious connotation to it, maybe. He can help you after a crash. So the he is pretty important here because it suggests that this clue might be gendered. So with IT, information technology, it could be IT guy. The IT guy, he might help you after a crash. Actor Rames, uh, Ving Rames, right, as an actor. Low point abbreviation. A low point could be a minimum, the most straightforward possible interpretation of that clue. Rapper featured on Flo Rida's Low. I don't know the song, but based purely on the um, number of letters and the existing crosses, I'm going to guess it's T-Pain. Here we have Prince, perhaps. Uh, and we don't, we probably, well, I'm confident we don't use the circled letters in a crosses, but that doesn't mean we don't use them in downs. Oh, actually, now we can look here. Ah, Slimming Aid, a diet pill. So they are used in downs. And of course I knew that, obviously, because the very first thing I put into the puzzle, I think, was odds, which used the, the circled letter down. So I don't know what I was thinking there. Sorry. So, boy, so what is this? Do I have something wrong here? This might just be a name I don't know at all, which is more than possible. We'll just keep going and hopefully we get it with 27 across, although not very confident about style of diamond with a flat base. Let's just keep looking. So they're not, this is Z and A, but this isn't. So what is this? I don't know. Here we have takes down, puts down. Spreadsheet command. I don't know. First name on Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh, I see. So takes down would be jots down. And the first name, if you remember, we've discussed this maybe once or twice before. When, when you see first name in a crossword, that means metaphorically the first name as in a very important person within the context of whatever sort of subject area or field is being... Uh, given to you, but also they usually by that mean your given name, the given name of the person, their first name, um, sort of getting both of those into into one bit of clue. It's just a thing that happens very often on the New York Times crossword. So look out for that. And that would make takes down, jots down. So Jen Blank um, could be a Jen Blank blank -er, a member of whatever generation, probably Gen Xer. I think it's the most common of these, but it could be Y or Z as well. Buckingham Palace figures. Yeoman, maybe? Yeoman, M-E-N? The uh, sort of guard figures, yeoman. So that does make that, if that's correct, that makes the generation wire, which is Absolutely not a thing I, anyone ever says, I don't think. Generation Wire, hmm, I think there could probably be a better clue for that. But something like, you're out or something, umpire, slangy phrase, something like that. Giant on both the Nikkei and NYSE indexes. So the Nikkei is the um, major Japanese stock market and NYSE is the New York Stock Exchange. So... I mean, Sony with this O-N would come to mind, but <clears throat> but that obviously doesn't uh, fit too few letters. So what, <clears throat> it's presumably a Japanese company. I think it's less likely that it would be an American company listed on the Nikkei. I mean, I suppose it's possible, but I suspect it's a Japanese company. Why am I not seeing? Oh, Honda. Honda. Sorry. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Gives zero stars, say. Could be fails. 
But fails has a connotation of a teacher failing a student, and those aren't usually star grades. Those are usually letter grades. I'm not really sure. Let's keep looking around. Spreadsheet command, sort data, maybe? Oh, oh, sorry. I just realized I've been doing something. I've made a terrible mistake. Uh, I made a very silly assumption very early on. You've probably all been E yelling at me about it. This is not on guard surrounded by Z and A. It's on guard with surrounded by Z and N that make Zen Garden. And that makes the co-star of Joker, De Niro. I'm really sorry about this. This must have been incredibly frustrating to you all. I'm sorry. So there are... Um, wow, interesting. So could a fencer's cry be both on guard but also Zen Garden? Would they cry Zen Garden because they're putting a fence around a Zen Garden? Could that possibly be the case? So here we have, uh, yeah, I'm not going to see what this is. Style of diamond with a flat base. I'm sorry if, you, if you're familiar with this concept. So this could this be stable mate? Yeah, may, maybe the clues aren't doing double duty because I don't see how a stable mate would be a spot for a dinner plate. But, I, but stable mate is, it seems like a plausible word. So something that nearly one million Americans practice regularly. Not sure. We'll have to break into that that corner some at some point, but we'll deal with that later. All right. I'm really sorry about that oversight. That was pretty poor on my part. Roadside restaurant sign. Eat here, I guess. So let's see. Expert. Oh, an expert would be a pro. A Trojan war hero, Aeneas of the Aeneid. Is that it? Is that how you spell his name? Prince, perhaps. Evidence, as in uh, fingerprints. Oh, right, and we can probably, let's see, can we guess at this? Weathered, maybe? As in a weathered old uh, axiom or something? Uh, be a kvetch. Is that to complain, basically? Here we have gives zero stars, say. So I'm missing things down here in this. Alice in Wonderland cry. Well, the, was it the Mad Hatter who cries I'm late? Or no, the, the hare, the rabbit, white rabbit? No, there's some different rabbit maybe. Don't remember. <laughs> Someone's late for a very important date in Alice in Wonderland. Oh, give zero stars. I guess hates. Okay, fair enough. I was looking for something more formal for some reason. Lead into long. Um, could be ere long, sort of a poetic way of saying before long, soon, ere long. To completely cover something is to encase it. To fix in a way, to fix a pet would be to neuter the pet. So, oh, I see. To be, to be a kvetch is to whine, and then that is weathered. So, yeah, that was... That supposition was correct. Here we have NBA great with a doctorate in education. Um, well, I didn't know this fact. It's very interesting. But I suspect based on the crosses, it's O'Neill, Shaquille O'Neal. Mid-East locale of Sierra Fortress. I'm not sure. Aiden, maybe? Expert could be an ace. Ottawa NHLer to fans. If it were N from Aiden, that would be Sen, maybe Senator. Could there be the Ottawa Senators? That's possible. Oh, here we go. We have on and on, or how to read 1827, 37, and 51 across to understand this puzzle's theme. Ah, so endlessly, right? Because we're removing the ends, the, the sort of bookends that I mentioned at the beginning of the puzzle. We remove them. And on and on is endlessly, yes. So this is probably Aiden. And then here we have blank ears. I'm all ears. I'm all ears if anyone has any any ideas about a style of diamond with a flat base. Roger on the high seas. So this could be referring to Roger, the radio reply to say, yes, understood. I guess what Roger means, right? 
II is an II Kappen. Long Island home of Brookhaven National Laboratory, I'm not sure, where lab coats get cleaned. This, because of the question mark, I wonder if this is referring not to a, labor, uh, a laboratory, but to a Labrador, a dog. Vet something, kennel, uh, I don't know, I mean, maybe it isn't that. It appears twice in the Fibonacci sequence. One? Oh, yeah. Is it? I don't know. I don't know what other number it would be. Sign of a hit. Um, so this refers to a theatrical production. I think often musical theater this is most associated with, maybe. Um, if the seats have all been sold, but there's still standing room remaining, there might be a sign saying SRO, standing room only. I suspect that's what that is. I. Ah. <laughs> I, or the royal we. So the royal we, when I think most famously a monarch would say, we are not amused, that's the royal we, meaning I, I am not amused, is really what they're saying. Harold, who sought the Republican presidential nomination nine times over 48 years. Yeah, I don't know. Presumably before my time. So, let's see, screening group. So at the airport, for instance, you might get screened in the United States by the Transport Security Administration, I think is what it is, the TSA. Spouts. Well, it could end with an S, so let's look over here. Designer initials. Ah, this comes up in the New York Times crossword not infrequently, so it's good. This is a good set of initials to remember. Yves Saint Laurent. YSL. And spouts, oh, spouts could be spews, a discussion group. And here we have Rafael Nadal's home country in the Olympics. Is he Spanish? ESP for España? A discussion group could be a panel. So there's that. And then what is this? Oh, where lab coats get cleaned, a pet spa. I don't know that I'm familiar with the concept of a pet spa, but it seems to fit the clue. And then here we have Long Island home of Brookhaven National Laboratory. Upton? Boy, this is a tough one if you don't know these. Two extremely proper nouns crossing one another. Neither of them I would consider to be particularly common knowledge. I mean, I am grew up in the US and I don't, uh, I don't know these, unfortunately. If I had to guess, I would guess Upton. Maybe let's come back to it to see if there's any other things we have to guess at later. When I say Upton, it's just because it works with both. I mean, Stassen is, I suppose, a plausible surname, and Upton is a plausible place name. Okay, so a taste. We have Titania's spouse in Shakespeare. Titania, Titania is the fairy queen in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Is it Oberon was her husband, or the fairy king? I want to say. Sorry if I'm getting some detail of that wrong. To scatter could be to sow, as in to scatter seeds, to sow seeds. To bear, um, abide, perhaps. To sort of to bear something, to take it, to deal with it, to abide. Taste. I was going to say savor, but that's the British spelling, so I don't... I doubt they would do that. So I'm not sure, actually. I'm sorry if that's obvious. Like H among H, I, and J. Well, with the W, I, I wonder if it's... Well, I was going to say widths, but it's just H, not all three of them, so it wouldn't be plural. I was wondering if it's some kind of clothing or shoe width convention or something, but... Widest? H, the H glyph is wider than I or J? Maybe. French lead in to chat or cha, which would be cat in French. I'm not sure what that is. 
To not beat is to lose to, I suppose. That's easy enough. Union agreements. Could be union, meaning a uh, labor union, a guild. Um, could be union, meaning union of states or countries. Not sure. Something that nearly one million Americans practice regularly. I don't know. Why am I not seeing what that is? Here we have seen in Edward Hopper's Nighthawk. So this is a very famous painting depicting uh, a diner, patrons in a diner. With no door, I think notably, that diner doesn't have an obvious door. Maybe I'm misremembering that. Style of diamond with a flat base. Rose cut? Is a rose cut diamond? Is that something? And then that could make prosecute here. Entre? Could this be entre? Uh, oh, medicine. Something that nearly one million... Oh, I see. Nearly one million Americans practice medicine regularly. Is that... Could that be it? Tesla had one in 2010 for short. Oh, yeah. I should have looked at this earlier. That's an IPO, an initial public offering. So when a private company is listed on public markets, such as... Honda is on the Nikkei and New York Stock Exchange, apparently. Oh, so to taste could be to sample something. And then, oh, I see, union agreements. Union as a marriage. That was one sense I didn't, uh, I did not come up with. So a prenuptial agreement before a marriage. So I think all that's left is to guess at T here. Yes. So there we go. That's the Thursday puzzle. And... As predicted before beginning, Thursday is often the, the the day with something a bit stranger, a bit more clever, some, a theme that's a bit more involved. And I wonder, is it the case that, is there anything that ties together the uh, sort of secondary fill in these spaces, Zen garden, prosecute, stable mate, and weathered. I don't think so. I think it's just that they're valid words, or in the case of Zen garden phrases, that are able to parse with these extra bookends. I think that's all it is. I don't think there's anything else going on there. It's just a bit of wordplay, sort of. It's a bit of um, lingu it's sort of a linguistic flourish, I suppose to tie in with the endlessly theme. So, yeah. Let me know how you fared with that. If it took you as long as it if it took you as long as it took me to spot what was really going on. It's uh I, I can't believe how how far ahead I plowed with this completely incorrect understanding of how of how the uh, the theme works. So again, I apologize uh, for that wild goose chase on which I led myself. Um but yeah, pretty clever. On guard for Zen Garden, Rose Cut for Prosecute, Table Mat for Stable Mate, and Eat Here for Weathered. Eat Here is, is, for Weathered is pretty fun. Um, so yeah, let me know what you made of this puzzle that gave you a hard time, an easy time. Yesterday, it seemed like the there were some people who struggled with it, but it seems like, broadly speaking, people had a good time with yesterday's Big If puzzle. Be curious to know how people do with this, whether the Sometimes this kind of theme that uh, plays around with words and has, in this case, for each of these theme answers, two valid fills simultaneously, sometimes that makes things harder, sometimes it makes things easier, because to some extent it constrains what you put in here. The, the, the word, either one of these, has to seamlessly mesh with the other. So sometimes that can actually be a help. I'll be, let me know how you fared. And um, with that, if you enjoyed this video, if you're enjoying this series more broadly, why not subscribe? Click the subscribe button and you will be notified according to your preferences as these videos go up each morning. And if you know someone who might like to uh, find out what On Guard has to do with the Zen Garden, let them know. Let them know about this series. Perhaps they'll enjoy it. Maybe they would like to get into the crossword puzzle. Maybe they've done crossword puzzles once or twice, but... Um, found it uh, impenetrable and could use some tips, pass this along. And finally, if you're particularly enjoying this series and you would like to help contribute 
to its long-term sustainability, then if you could toss me a couple of quid or a few bucks through my coffee donation page, which is linked in the description field underneath each of these videos, I would be enormously appreciative. Uh, it does mean a lot to me, and especially those of you who have chosen to donate on a monthly recurring basis. That is particularly appreciated um, by me. It means a lot. Thank you so much to everyone who's done that or donated in any other capacity. And also, thanks for watching the video, even if you're not in a position to financially con contribute at the moment, which is entirely understandable. Thanks for solving crosswords with me. And I hope you'll do it again tomorrow for the Friday puzzle, a more difficult but maybe also slightly more straightforward puzzle than today's. Until then, have an excellent Thursday. Take care.